The multiple endocrine neoplasias, or MENs, are a great example of the difference between clinical medicine and step one medicine. There are these esoteric disorders that are zebras in practice, but disproportionately high yield on step one. The MENs are autosomal dominant, kind of like the neurocutaneous disorders, but instead of causing tumors of the nervous system, they predispose individuals towards endocrine tumors. Now, I usually hate memorizing stupid lists, but the first aid mnemonic for these is so good and so memorable that I'm seriously sorry I've never seen an MEN patient on the floors. I'd have killed that diagnosis. Anyway, in the first aid mnemonic, there's an acronym and a visual mnemonic for each. Let's start with MEN1. MEN1 is a mutation of the creatively named menin gene on chromosome 11, whereas the others are mutations of the ret gene. So MEN1 predisposes to pituitary tumors, parathyroid tumors, and endocrine pancreas tumors like insulinomas, glucagonomas, gastronomas, you name it. MEN1 is also associated with a few other less common tumors like angiofibromas, collagenomas, and meningiomas, but the three characteristic tumors can be remembered as the three Ps. If you look at the figure, you'll see that anatomically, these organs also form a diamond. MEN2A predisposes patients to medullary thyroid carcinoma, parathyroid adenomas, and pheochromocytomas. That's 1M and 2Ps. This is getting kind of scary, guys. While MEN1 is the diamond, MEN2A is the square. MEN2B causes mucosal neuromas, which are these benign tumors around the mouth and face, medullary thyroid cancer, and pheochromocytomas. That's 2Ms and 1P. See, I told you guys this is the best mnemonic ever. As you can see, there's a lot of overlap between MEN2A and 2B, which makes sense as they're both mutations of the RET gene. But MEN2B doesn't form a square. It forms a triangle. Last important fact about MEN2B, in addition to the tumors, this specific RET mutation predisposes patients to a Marfanoid habitus. Which is important because not all tall, lanky folk have Marfan syndrome. Can you think of another disorder that causes Marfanoid habitus? Well, if you don't want to stick with the obvious answer of Marfan syndrome, the other important disorder to remember is homocysteinuria. Check out the biochem section if you have no idea what that is. So to recap, MEN1, the diamond, has three Ps, MEN2A, the square, has one M and two Ps, and MEN2B, the triangle, has two Ms and one P, plus Marfanoid habitus. Brilliant, I know. Now, just like the neurocutaneous disorders, there is highly variable penetrance with MENs. Just because you have MEN1, for example, doesn't mean you're going to get pituitary and parathyroid and a pancreatic tumor. You just have a higher risk for those. Probably the most important thing to keep in mind is the familial inheritance. If dad and uncle have a Marfanoid habitus and grandpa had a pheo, then maybe it's time to get genetically tested for a RET oncogene mutation.